church say amen. amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know these are extraordinary times yes. that we are going through. But let me remind you that we serve an extraordinary God. Yes, sir. Amen. That can do anything but fail. All right. Amen. One of the things is that we have to get ourselves equipped to be able to deal with our circumstances. And many folks, uh, I know that they struggle with issues and they think that we are not able to overcome uh, some of the things that we encounter on a daily basis. But I remember the Apostle Peter writing in his epistle, Peter said, for as much as then as Christ has suffered for us right. in the flesh, Amen. he says, arm yourself yes. likewise. Yes. In other words, he said, we got to equip ourselves. Now, not with materialistic, but we got to equip our mind spiritually Amen. only from God's word. Amen. It's extraordinary times like this that try our faith yes, rather than the time trying our faith. Our faith should try the time. All right. So, so we, we, need to, we need to equip ourselves and get ready. Uh, God bless you, those who are viewing us uh, on, on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube and tune in with us, particularly our members. We're so happy you did. And we look forward to the day that we'll be able to come back into Amen. the sanctuary. Not, not so much that you can't worship without being in the sanctuary. I just think it's good to be able to fellowship and to yeah. encourage and listen to others and try to help us to walk a better life. That, that's the reason that I'm looking forward to coming back. Now, 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 contrary to what some believe, I don't want to rush back. I, I want to come back when it's safe. And the only way that we will know when it's safe is when God lets us know. I think this whole crisis is that God, God is just sick of the world and trying to fix things. And he's fixing it his way. Now, Isaiah said his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither his ways our ways, for as high as the heavens are above him, so his thoughts our thoughts, and his ways our ways. I don't understand. I don't claim to understand what God is doing. Whatever he's doing is his business. I remember reading back of chapter 2 uh, when God took a nation that was worse than the children of Israel and uh, began to discipline with that. And Habakkuk questioned God. I want to tell you, it's okay to question God. In times like this, it's okay for you in your prayer, in your closet, to ask God why we're we going through this. It's okay to do that. Habakkuk questioned God. You know what God told him? You go up there and your wife's child and watch me. In other words, God, God's going to do his business. And I, I say that because I know that we've been separated virus has kept us separated from friends and family. Uh, we we'll have limited our choice of travel, which is good uh, for many of us. Uh, but but the, the Lord will fix this, and he removed it. The Bible declares that this too shall pass. Amen. Uh, if I, now I'm old school. Right, and, and for you viewers that know me and worship here at Sweetwater, a lot of you all that don't know me, I'm old school. I'm a five-stepper. Amen. 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 So you a five-stepper. I'm a five-stepper. I like five-stepper. I like good endings. Yes, Amen. Amen. When I see a when I see a novel, read a novel, or see a good story, I like to hear a good ending. Yes, sir. I don't want to get into the thing that they say. Part, you read part two next week. Finish it now. I don't like to be like those Paul Harvey folks. Let's hear the rest of. So today, uh, and I shared this with with uh, with, with, with Brother Trevante, I said uh, the lesson I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kiss the lesson. You know what I mean by that? K I S S. I'm gonna keep it simple, stupid. And, and we're gonna go from there. So uh, I, I would like to uh, encourage you if you have your whatever device you read the Word of God on. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 6, uh, and we'll look at, begin at verse
verse number 9 and uh, try to get through to where we need to go. Amen. I was just thinking when I was listening to our brethren conducting the devotional services, the prayers offered on our behalf, the songs that were sung. You, you, you know, I, even when you can't see anything but trouble in the way, God, God is still good. You know, Brother Campbell, last night he, he, he stationed an angel by our bed to keep our heart in rhythm, keep the blood running. You didn't. You passed out when you went to sleep. But God did that, and that's because he loves us. He cares for us. Paul, in his writing, if you, uh, in verse 7, he said, but, but be not deceived. God is not. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, that, 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 that is an immutable law of the Spirit. It, if, it's, if you sow, that's what you reap. Amen. Uh, and, and then he transforms that. Uh, he says, for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh uh, reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. In verse 9, uh, I want to elevate. Uh, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap I often wonder, I often wonder, well, why do we serve God? Well, why, why is it that folk are interested in, some folk are not interested in serving God? And I often think, do, do we serve him just for short-term temporal uh, benefits, you know, that he can move this or move that? Uh, that, that seems what occurs on many occasions. Uh, uh, so why, why do we serve him? Are we actually involved? Do we want to please God? Do we want to do his will? Do we want to get out of ourselves and get in the way of God? Why, why do folks serve God to start with? And when we look at Job, Job was accused of serving God for what he could get out of life. A lot of folk like that, personal. In other words, their present, a lot of people will serve God based on their present moment. I imagine this virus is going to run a lot of folk to serving God. But then when this present moment is gone, they're going to go. Uh, but, 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 and, and that's Satan. Uh, 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 Satan even asks God, does Job just serve you? But what he fears. In other words, what he's going through right now, Job will serve you. But don't let it get better. But God knew Job. Uh, he knew he would be faithful, whether it was to his advantage or in the short term or not. And, and so it is true with you and I today uh, as we see what we... And one of the ways that, that we want to be better, that we want to be able to serve God, is we have to understand the dynamics of serving God takes patience. The quality of our character, uh, when we look at Job, Job was a patient man through all of the struggles that he encountered, but he waited on God. And, and I, I say that because Whatever we are experiencing during these times now, it's going to take some patience. I know that uh, one of the things about our society, we use the instant gratification. I tell you, I was old school, so don't, don't hold that against me. We didn't have drive throughs when I was a kid going to get a hamburger. Get out the car and go in and get it. Or, or once you walk there, you go get it. Now they got instant gratification. Thanks. Even if you don't feel when you can just go in and 
drive up, look at your friend, cry a few minutes, drive up. Everything's instant gratification in this society. And that's the way we want to respond to crisis. That's the way we want to respond to hardships. That's the way we want to respond to everything we encounter. But I want to tell you something. Some things come in our line to help us to develop patience. And so, and our reward, when you learn patience, your reward is greater. And so we have to learn that the quality, it's a, it should be a quality of the character. When you look at what Job had, he learned, he, had, he learned the ability and patience is having the ability to endure when it just doesn't seem possible. Amen. It's the ability to hold out. It's, it's the ability to bear up. It's the ability to preserve when things are difficult. You preserve me, hold on in spite of. Trust God in spite of. And patience takes uh, the, the long view. Uh, you take a person who invests in the stock market. Uh, he he, he, he invests in because he wants to earn income and and, and elevate his, his 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 monetary value, but it doesn't happen overnight. So then we have to patience is that way. Job was blessed because of his endurance of patience. James chapter five. The verses are ten and eleven. Bible speaks. It said, take my brethren, the prophets of who have spoken in the name of the Lord for the example of the suffering and affliction and patience. He said, and behold, we count them happy, which ye shall endure patience. He said, Job had, and seen the end of the Lord, that uh, he had, the Lord is very pitiful, and he's very tender in mercy. When we learn patience, When the nighttime closes in, we must not forget the assurance that that we have in the Lord. That we have assurance in the Lord when things are good. We have to have that same assurance. It has to be elevated when things are dark. Patience is one of the great Bible virtues. Hebrews chapter six. If your Bible, I, I, I like to read. Like I'm old school, and I know some guys can quote, and, and, and I can too, but it's, it's good to read it so that you can go back and read it tonight. I won't be there with you this evening. In Hebrews chapter 6, and the verse is uh, beginning at verse number 11, and the Bible says, he says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the, sure, uh, to the full assurance of hope unto the end. He said, that you may not uh, be slothful, but follow them through faith and patience in her and the promises. But God has made promises, and if you and I are standing on his promises, we're standing by faith. Amen. We're standing by patience. Amen. God's promises are true. And then patience is, uh, as I say, a great Bible that we should learn uh, uh, faith and patience inherit the promises Jesus said but ye shall uh, endure to the end the same shall be saved uh, Jesus said by your patience you, you possess uh, your souls and, and by your endurance you will gain life well, we have to understand that so when we get to the text here and I'm going to give you three quick uh, points to help us element uh, to understand how it is that that if we hold on, if we, if we can endure, due season, we're going through this season right now. He said, due season. Uh, one of the things is we, we have to we have to learn to be like the farmer. And I don't know how many of us have ag our agricultural backgrounds, but those those of that work and live on growing things often know about patience things that they learn if you become a person involved in agriculture 
Agriculture is patience and trust. Amen. If you, if you earn a living through agriculture, growing, you, you got to have some patience and you got to have some trust. And from patience stems endurance. Amen. Because if you, if you earn your living on, 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 on the land, you can have all the trust you want, go out and plant the crop, but you got to weed it every once in a while. You, you got to water it. You, gotta, you struggle with drought. You struggle with insect. All of these things take place, and they try your faith. You know, I, I, I never did that, but I can imagine that many times that those folk who earn their income, earn their living, dealing with agriculture, have wanted to just toss the towel many times. When drought comes, when, when the crop is not producing as they think, after all of the effort they put into it, they don't see any difference. I, I'm saying that because we have to have that farmer mentality when it comes to serving God. We have to have, be patient. We have to be trust, uh, patient. And, and, and the farmer gets his reward only when there is a harvest. The Bible says we get our reward if we can hold on when the harvest is due. And, and we don't know when that is. But we what we do is trust God and believe that there will be a harvest. We don't know when this virus is going to leave. We got all the scientists, all the doctors. Now, I'm not saying that we should ignore them. No, no ma'am and no sir. We should follow CD order. But we don't know when it's going to leave. They, they pretty, somebody said it was gone by Easter. Easter, bingo. It's still, in fact, it got worse. But I know who does know. That's the Lord. I can't see it. I can't even fathom. But the, but the Lord knows. And so we, we, we'll be able to reap that harvest when God makes the decision. But what happens in the meantime, you and I have to continue to hold on and trust in the Lord with all our heart and solemn and lean not on our own understanding. He will direct us if we will allow him to direct us. And that direction for success and for victory in Jesus is our reason. James chapter 5. I tell you, I like that. If you have your device, I'll call a couple of scripts every once in a while. I'll allow you to go there and follow with me. I like for you to follow with me. James chapter 5. And verse number 7. The Bible says, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Therefore the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receives it, the early and latter rain. He said, but be also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord. Draw nigh. Get close to God. You're looking for protection? You, yes, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. Do all of the things that the CDC say, but you're looking Get close to God. And the church ought to draw nigh to God. But there, there shouldn't be any weaknesses. These are the reasons that we that suggest that we ought to get closer to God. Because we don't control nothing. We don't control it. The United States, the richest country in the world, can't control this. In fact, we are the worst in cases. in the Lord, but not only trust in him, when we say we trust in him, we need to get closer to him. Amen. And then, not only as farmers, not only as having patience, but then we have to learn that we must take a long look at this. We must view this from the long view, not the short term. You know, if, we, if, if this thing lasts 90 years, Lasts a hundred years. Now, if it lasts a thousand years, that's not only one day in God's sight. Now, 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 we've been going through this about three months, and we said, "Oh man, it's been so long." In God's sight, the same thing. Unfortunately, there are some folks who are struggling. Fortunately.
unfortunately their loved ones have been lost. I don't know how God makes his mind up to deal with these types of issues. But I do know the scripture declares in Romans chapter Notice he didn't say all things were good. But he said all things. Paul, are you talking about even something in a situation like this with Kobe? He said all things. I don't care how you categorize it. This is a part of all things. And he said they work together for good. To them that love the Lord. To them that are called. And you got to get this. Ladies and gentlemen, church members alike, you got to get this. He said, to them that are called. No, nobody, and I'm being facetious, nobody actually got on the phone and called you. The gospel called. And that, that, that equates to your obedience to the gospel of Christ. When you hear God's word, when you believe it, when you repent, when you confess, when you are baptized, that's the call. When you obey God's word, that's the call. Paul said to them that are called according to his purpose. His whole purpose is to save us. It's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's God's whole purpose. And it's not for, oh, if God doing this to punish. God don't have to do that to punish you. God don't have to do nothing, and you punish yourself. But, but, but we must take a long view of this. Solomon understood this. When Solomon makes it, he says, his mercies are renewed every day. Boy, we, that we got something to holler, hallelujah. Church, even though we're in, in this uh, situation, but we got something to pray about and praise God and, and, and hallelujah. He said, Solomon said, his mercies are renewed every day. In other words, I got a chance. Not a second chance, but another chance. That's due. Take advantage of that just being in the Lord. Uh, many times we respond differently. But take a, take a long view of what God is doing us. We must, we must not take an accusing attitude toward God for what's going on, but we must see the, the indifference in the problem, that we don't understand how God is going to work it out, but we can stand on his promise that he will work it out. have the patience to wait to the end. To see the end of the story. It's been written. We don't need to draw a, pre, a premature conclusion about, about how God is doing this. God will work it out. What we need to do is stand on cultivating our disposition and our attitude and, and our spirit so that we can get closer to God. So that we can learn what it means to obey him. So we can learn what it means. Thank you very much. So we can learn what it means to get closer to him and, and stand on his promises. Let me tell you something. Christianity cost a lot. We, we, the little, and, and this, this has cost us personal because we're going through some things. I know that many of us have I lost our monetary means, but let me tell you something. This costs something. This costs Jesus his life. And I want you to think about it for a minute. That how God's son was humiliated. How they spat on him. How they mocked him. How they said, he saved others himself. He cannot save. All of this humiliation. And Jesus could have come down from the cross. He could have called the legion. But he stayed there for a wretch like me. And then when my turn comes, and I won't 
say, I'm not saying this is not a difficult thing. But when my turn comes, I'm ready to throw in the towel. But Paul writes to the church in Galatia to encourage the Christians. He says, don't get weary in well doing, for in due season. I want to say to the churches, don't get weary. Things are going to get better. They, as the little boy said about the limit, they're going to get good and good. But you can't throw in the towel. You got to hang around. You got to go through some things. You got to trust in the Lord. You got to hold on. You got to draw nigh. Amen. Get near. And the Lord will take care of you. For those of you who may be viewing this morning who agree with the, the word of God. Let me tell you, there are a couple of things that you need to do. Uh, this is possible. This is possible. Let me tell you, the time is winding up. And what we have to learn to do now is trust in the Lord. We got to hear him. You, you want the Lord to be active in your life? You got you to obey him. And that starts with hearing what he has to say. First Corinthians, he tells us, uh, Paul writes and tells us, gospel. We got to hear that. And Paul says, with that gospel, we can be saved standing in it. So we've got to hear it. We've got to believe it. We've got to repent of our sins, confess Jesus, and be willing to be baptized. Now, there are some folk who are confessing. Listen, preacher, I'm, I'm, I'm already saved. You might be already said that you already say that none of the things that the Bible has declared. God saves all of us. I know there's some folk who doubt that. In Jude, chapter 1, verse 3, Jude said, I, it, it, I had to write unto you about the common salvation. You know what makes, do you know what makes salvation common? It wouldn't, it would be uncommon, Brother Campbell, if he saw it, saved you one way and saved me another. What makes it common is all of us are saved the same way. None of us have, I, none of us who are saved has had an, a, a religious experience. We had to hear God's word. We had to believe it. We had to repent of our sins. We had to confess Jesus. And we had to be willing to be buried in the water of grace and baptism. Can I share something with you in my conclusion? Listen at Paul in his writing to the church in Rome. Romans chapter 6. Verse number. Paul said, what shall we say? He said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, how can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? He said, no, you're not. Ask so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ, was baptized into his death. This is the part that, that got me 48 years of this guy. He said, therefore, we are buried with him. I said, I want to get with Jesus. Paul said, And he goes on to say, it's like his Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we, oh, I love this, should rise to walk in the newness of life. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do that this morning. We're here at the building. We will stand by. If you call and let us know, the number's on the screen. Yes, take, take precautionaries coming over. Do whatever is necessary to protect yourself. But the water is ready. We can baptize you. You can be saved today. But we won't let corona hinder you. You can be saved today. You can have your sins washed away. You can be placed in the blood of, contact the blood of Jesus. It can cleanse you up. Don't, don't, don't put it up. Don't put it up. Well, after, preacher, that sounds good. I'll come over after all of this is gone. You may not be here. You may be one of the Amen. ones that this thing claims. So why take a chance? Those of us who are members, and, and I, I pray that I have said something that just will cause you to strengthen your faith where you are and just take a step to get close to God. When I say get close, Make sacrifices. Start reading. Start studying. Not start trying.
trying to practice what we preach. Make applicable to your life. Let me tell you something. God knows who you are. He knows that. He's very much aware of our status. If you hear any condition, we're going to ask you to take advantage of it. Take advantage of it today. Listen, our lives are not in our own hands. As much as we like to think that we control it, we do not. Uh, we, we, we need to hear the Lord. We need to respond to Now I'm not saying I'm not saying don't 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 be serious about this virus. It's serious. You go out there in a wayward behavior and just throw all caution to the wind. You're gonna get sick. I can't guarantee you you won't. And even if you make uh, make all the precautions to stay well, you still can get sick. You still can get sick. But what I can guarantee. baptized as the church, the body of Christ. He promised to save us in the end. He promised to save us. That's a promise. You can stand. Well, but you don't know what I'm going through. I don't have to know any of that. All of us go through something. You just obey God. You say. I want to thank you for being with us this morning. I want to thank you for listening to our broadcast. We're located at 7009 Wilson Boulevard. Uh, we have some very fine leaders here at Sweetwater Church of Christ. We have a loving group of Christians that meet here uh, each Lord's Day. We're here on Wednesdays. But with the uh, situation the way we are, we're apparently meeting on, uh, on live stream, on Facebook, and Twitter. You can take advantage of coming and being with us there. Uh, we want we want to help you. We want to get to know you. You view on us. Uh, send us a card. Drop us a card, or make a phone call, talk to us. We want to get to know you. We're, we're not just here on a part-time basis. We're not just here doing this. We are here because we are in the soul-saving business. Amen. We want to save souls. Yeah. Uh, we want to teach people the word, of the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to teach them how to be saved. And not only that, we want to transfer it, help people to live better lives. Yeah. I, I didn't say that you would make a lot more money. You may, but I, if you can live for Jesus, yes, sir. it gives you some purpose to living in this life. Thank you so much. God bless you. I want you to know that we absolutely do love you. There's nothing Hello, I'm Richard Coffey, Senior Minister of Sweetwater Church of Christ. I'm here with Minister uh, Peterson. I want to introduce him who's doing the pulpit preaching here for us. Okay. Hi, Brother Javante Peterson again, Minister here at Sweetwater Church of Christ. We'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you for visiting us. We pray that you were blessed by the worship services. And if by chance you have any questions, we pray that you reach out and contact us so that we can answer any biblical questions that you have. For any Bible question that you can bring, we'll be sure to give you a Bible answer. Remember, morning Bible class starts on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Worship service begins at 10. Afternoon service begins at 6 o'clock. And then midweek Bible study begins at 7. We pray that you come out at any given moment. Come out, worship with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached and the water is sweet. God bless you. God bless you. In this so sinful world, my time is running out, and the devil won't quit. He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life, but something is sustaining me. And I know it won't be long till he comes and takes me home. I gotta get ready for that day. I don't wanna get left outside the gate. It's my prayer, it's my plea with you, it's where I wanna be.